Hey, welcome back everybody. This video we are going to be discussing how SignalR is implemented. We're just going to be scratching the surface here to actually talk about what we need to do as programmers to make SignalR do its thing. Like, what do we type? The first thing we need to do is create a C-sharp class. So for those of you who don't know, a class is basically a blueprint of data we want to create. And we'll discuss that a little bit more. But within this class, we are going to create methods. A method is basically a section of code that we can call or invoke. That is the term that I'm going to try to use in this series. Now methods, you can also call them functions, but the difference is that a method is basically a function in a class or an object, which minor detail, but basically methods, functions, same thing. What is a class again? Well, it's a blueprint that we basically structure what our, we want our data to look like. And then what we do is we instantiate that class into what's known as an object. So you could say an object is an instance of a class. So I'll just go through a classic example of a person class. So we have a person class and we put methods in there such as anything we want the person to do, such as walk, talk, complain, whine, you know, what most people do, eat. And then we can instantiate that class into an object, which would be a specific person, such as Caleb. Then Caleb could do those methods, such as walk, talk, eat, or whatever. So this is like the basics of object-oriented programming. And this series really isn't about object-oriented programming, but I'm just trying to give you the basics in case you don't know much about it. But in general, it's pretty easy, so you don't gotta worry about it, because I'll be explaining it as we type out code but this will give you the fundamentals of what we need to know. A class is instantiated into an object, and then you can invoke the methods in that object. So if we created a class called person, we could make an object called Caleb, and then we could say something like, this would be invoking the talk method on the Caleb object, which is an instance of the person class. Yeah. Well, how does this apply to signal R? Because we're not going to be making person classes. We're going to be making a class called a hub. And how is signal R going to know that this class is a hub? Well, it's going to inherit from a class that's already made in signal R, which is conveniently named the hub class. The way we show that in C sharp is we put a colon after our after our class name. So if we made a class, we could say it. It's called a my, my hub, all right? We need to tell C sharp that this is a hub. So we put a colon and then just put hub. Now, this is a hub class. We are going to instantiate this when somebody goes to our website, we create a my hub instance. So within this my hub class, which by the way, you can name it whatever you want, you're going to put methods of things that you want the client to be able to tell the server to do. So this is going to define what the client can command the server do. And then we're also going to make it so the server can tell the client what to do. On the server side of things, we have C sharp. And within this class, we have methods. Well, on the client side, in this example, we're using JavaScript. So on the client, oh shoot, my chalk. On the client side, we're going to have JavaScript functions. So with the magicness of signal R, the server side can call the functions or invoke the functions, and the client can invoke the server side methods. This is something that's very similar to what's known as RPC. Now RPC stands for Remote Procedure Call. So what that means is that the server and the client are separated and we're doing a procedural call on the other one. So a procedure is basically the same as a function or a method. So the server can call a procedure on the client side and the client can call a procedure on the server side. By the way, the word call, this is basically the equivalent of invoke. I'll use both of these interchangeably. So, same thing. Now with the hub, you have to inherit from the hub class. There's another kind of class we can use known as a persistent connection. So for that one, you're going to have to inherit from the persistent connection class. 
Now what's the difference between these? Well, they're slightly different, so they're basically two different ways you can work with Signal R. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the difference between hubs and persistent connections. Thanks guys, and I will see you then.